Hello friends, let's see the superficial muscles of the back. The superficial muscles of the back are the muscles which are going to connect the vertebral column with the upper limb. The superficial muscles of the back, they are in the form of two layers. The first layer include the trapezius muscle and latissimus torsi muscle. While the second layer include the muscles which are under the trapezius and the latissimus torsi and we find three main muscles within this second layer. These are the levator scapulae, rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor. So now let's see all these muscles one by one. Here we can see the view of the back and we can find that here at the upper side this is the external occipital protuberance which is situated just behind the skull and from the external occipital protuberance this curved margin they passes laterally and these two are called as the superior knuckle lines starting from this external occipital protuberance the this blackest line we can see over here in this figure it represent the spinous processes and the supraspinous ligaments of the cervical vertebrae as well as the thoracic vertebrae so here one ligament which is present somewhere up to here this ligament it connects the spinous process of the C1 to C7 vertebrae along with the supraspinous ligaments between them and this ligament it is elastic in nature and this ligament it is called as a ligamentum nuchae. Below the ligamentum nuchae this line it represents the interconnecting spinous processes of T1 to T12 vertebrae along with the interspinous ligaments between them and this trapezius muscle has extensive origin starting from the external occipital protuberance and the medial one third of this superior knuckle line along with it it is also going to arise from the ligamentum nuchae the spine of the c7 vertebrae and the spine of the t1 to t12 vertebrae along with the supraspinous ligament between them and this extensive origin this trapezius muscle passes laterally and forming a triangular shaped muscle and this muscle it is having the upper fibers and these upper fibers they are passing downward and laterally and they are forming the posterior boundary of the posterior triangle of the neck and these upper fibers they are going to insert over the clavicle on the posterior border of the lateral one third part while the middle fibers they are nearly horizontal and they are passes laterally and they are going to insert over the medial aspect of the acromion process. The lower fibers they are passes upward and laterally and they are going to form twisted fibers and going to insert over the deltoid tubercle on the spine of the scapula. So let's see this figure muscle in this another figure here we can appreciate that this is the superior knuckle line medial one third along with the external occipital protuberance and the ligamentum nuchae between the spines of the c1 to c7 vertebrae and this is the attachment site of the trapezius muscle over the spine of T1 to T12 along with the supraspinous ligament between them and this upper fibers they are passes downward and laterally going to insert over the clavicle on the posterior aspect this middle fibers they are passes laterally and going to insert over the acromion process medial aspect and the lower fibers they are going to passes upward and laterally going to insert over this deltoid tubercle of the spine. So this is the origin and the insertion of the trapezius muscle. So when we see this action of this trapezius muscle, we can say that when the contraction of this upper fibers of the trapezius muscle, it will lead to the elevation of the scapula. 
while the contraction of this middle fibers of this trapezius muscle will lead to the retraction of the scapula and the contraction of this lower fibers along with the upper fibers of this, cap, uh, this trapezius muscle will lead to the overhead abduction of the arm which will lead to the lateral rotation of the scapula. This trapezius muscle it is going to be supplied by the spinal part of the accessory nerve which is 11th cranial nerve and the proprioceptive fibers will be carried through C3 and C4 spinal nerves with its ventral rami. As the shape of the trapezius it is triangular on one side and the both the sided trapezius muscles they are collectively forming a trapezoid shape and that's why this muscle is named as trapezius. Now let's see the second muscle that is the latissimus dorsi muscle. This latissimus dorsi muscle it is a flat muscle just like that of the trapezius. It is basically a muscle of the upper limb but for the functional region it is shifted towards the superficial part of the back. So this is the latissimus dorsi muscle. This latissimus dorsi having extensive origin and it is going to arise from the outer lip of the lower part, outer lip of the posterior part of the iliac crest along with the spine of the sacrum as well as the spine of the all lumbar vertebrae, along with the supraspinous ligaments between them and it is also going to arise from the T12 to T7 spines along with the supraspinous ligaments and this latissimus torsi muscle it is going to form in the initial fibers and this fibers will pass is upward and laterally and going to twist with each other and going to insert in front of the humerus at the floor of the bicipital groove. We can appreciate that the upper border of this latissimus torsi it is nearly horizontal while the lower border of the latissimus torsi it is passes upward and laterally and it is oblique in nature. So here we can see this latissimus torsi muscle is going to arise from the spine of the sacral vertebrae along with the supraspinous ligaments between them and it is also going to arise from the iliac crest outer lip of the iliac crest on the posterior one third part and along with that it is also going to arise from the spine of the old lumbar vertebrae along with the supraspinous ligament and from T12 to T7 spines along with the supraspinous ligament between them. This fibers they passes upward and laterally and going to insert in front of the humerus at the floor of the bicipital groove. This latissimus torsi is going to form the posterior axillary fold and this muscle it is a twisted in nature. When we see the latissimus torsi in this figure we can appreciate that it is going to form two triangles. One triangle we can appreciate somewhere here and this triangle it is between the medial border of the scapula, lateral border of the trapezius and the upper border of the latissimus torsi. So this triangle it is the triangle which is situated at the sixth intercostal space and this triangle it is called as the triangle of auscultation. The floor of this triangle of auscultation it is formed by the sixth and the seventh rib and the intercostal space between them and that is the sixth intercostal space. So in case of the normal individual we can hear the auscultatory sound at this triangle which is present just related to the cardiac part of the stomach on the left side. But in case of the esophageal obstructions this auscultatory sound will be absent. So this is clinically important triangle. One more triangle it is also concerned with the latissimus torsi and this triangle it is present somewhere here. And this triangle it is called as the lumbar triangle of petit which is going to be formed by the iliac crest from below 
on the medial side it is going to be formed by the lateral border of the latissimus thoraci and on the lateral side it is going to be formed by this posterior free border of the external oblique muscle and this triangle it is called as the lumbar triangle of patet the floor of this lumbar triangle of the patet is formed by the internal oblique muscle and this lumbar triangle of the patet it is the relatively weak area and so the lumbar hernia can come out from this region this latissimus thoraci muscle it is going to be supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve the other name of this thoracodorsal nerve it is the nerve to latissimus thoraci and this is the branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus the root value of this thoracodorsal nerve or nerve to latissimus thoraci it is c6 c7 and c8 when we see the axon of the latissimus thoraci it is responsible for extension adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder joint this muscle it is also called as swimmer's muscle as this movement it is very helpful in case of the swimming one more muscle it is also called as swimmer's muscle and that is the pectoralis major which has the same action but having flexion of the shoulder joint instead of this extension so the action of the pectoralis major muscle it is the flexion adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder joint and collectively this latissimus thoraci and pectoralis major they are both are called as swimmer's muscle so this is all about the first layer of the superficial muscles of the back